Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cliff Notes podcast, where we ask a leader and find the way. Today we're joined by Nikki Raby, uh, who does for a variety of things from acting to coaching to writing. Uh, how are you today, Nikki? I'm really well. How are you? Rain coming down today, but uh, I hope the, uh, we can put some sunshine in the, <laughs> the rest of the day and have a, have a nice chat. Hello, and thanks for having me. Um, I do lots of things. So my background is um, I trained as an actor. And in 2000, I moved to London to go to drama school to live the poor, struggling artist dream. And um, I continue to be an actor after 25 years and uh, work across television and film and theatre and commercial. Um, but what I found was I was not very good at at doing the part-time behind the scenes you know waiting for the phone to ring type jobs and so in 2012 I decided that I really wanted to tap into my entrepreneurial spirit and I went on a bizarre uh it wasn't that bizarre but it was bizarre for me on a, this weekend course of how to become a life coach and I wasn't expecting to get anything from it I certainly wasn't looking to build a career from it but by Saturday morning lunchtime I was like I'm in this is great this is something that I could totally do so since then I've been able to really build this portfolio career where the acting is still very prevalent but I also have a coaching business where I work with um, personal brands, freelancers, creative small businesses, and from that has stemmed uh, writing and speaking gigs and I now have a podcast as well. Indeed, I've been uh, tuning in and uh, finding out some some good advice from uh, from your guests. So it's, it's nice to have a professional on too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And um, so, I mean, what a main engagement might be looking like for you now? I think it's, it's ever changing. And um, I'm very clear at the beginning of the year, I'm a huge fan of goal setting and um, really mapping out what it is that I want to achieve. And uh, I have a two year old as well. So you know, the year that he was born, and I was pregnant, I wasn't going, right, I've got to do four films this year, or, um, you know, things like that, because it just wasn't feasible. So um, I like to keep the my the career my career very diverse and creative um but that also means that i have to be very clear about how i use my time and to make sure that i'm really nurturing myself behind the scenes in terms of remaining creative and not just being a slave to my laptop because as you know many people who might be listening know is sometimes it can be really um uh, it's just the case that you get stuck into work mode. There's always an email. There's always a to-do list. So I have to be really conscious about how I live my life. And I've actually been building over the last couple of years um, some online courses and offerings, and they've really helped me to have that flexibility. So my partner is an actor as well. He went on tour last year. And so for parts of the tour, we were able, my son and I were able to go with him because I was still able to continue to work and likewise with my coaching clients they're all over the world so um being able to work directly from my laptop is, is a magic thing I, I still can't quite believe it that sounds great it's some added flexibility for you but uh, uh also must be uh, allows the flexibility for um these executives or people who've moved out to to work on their own uh some flexibility into their time for for how they can engage with you and and take on their learning Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think that more and more so as you know, I know often it's a stigma attached to women, but we're all juggling men, women, old, young, we've all got life circumstances that we need to add into the mix and want to add into the mix as well. And I think if we can shake up this traditional uh, way of working of like the only way you can do it is between the hours of nine to five, I really disagree. I feel like there are different ways that you can run a business and, and run it really successfully as well. No, I, I agree. Um, so it's it's not about working uh, extra hours to be working past 
past the uh, eight hours a day, but it is maybe restructuring those hours uh, to get the best out of the day. Yes, absolutely. And um, you don't necessarily need to be in one place. I mean, certainly uh, in the beginning when my son was born, I was working a lot from home because it just worked with what was going on at home. But at the beginning, or at the end of last year, actually, 2017, I made the decision to have a membership um, in a very lovely place in central London. And that's been really great as well, because working in a environment which is full of creative people, you know, movers and shakers, that's been really good for my momentum as well. And it makes my clients show up in a different way, having that environment where they feel looked after, where it feels luxurious, it feels high end. Um, Because there have been times over the years where I've done coaching sessions and, you know, because I'm generally a nice person and you know oh lovely Nikki oh she's nice um people would sometimes turn up in their dressing gown on Skype and you know then they'd be kind of yawning halfway through and they're like oh I haven't had any coffee and that's not really the best way to get results so I always think that there is a bit of a balance as well that you do have to show up um yeah, bring yourself to the table in whatever capacity. And uh, I see that you, you've also, though, uh, you bring yourself to the table in, in many different platforms um, with your uh, work on Instagram and uh, Facebook and, and podcasts and different things. How have you found uh, the, the work on different mediums online? I, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with, with some of them. Um, and I've really found that you don't have to be on all of them all of the time. And actually, they work in very different ways. Ways. The platforms work in very different ways. My favorite is definitely Instagram. I find it the most supportive. I find that that's where a lot of my clients really engage with me. Um, I find it easy to uh, play the game of beat the algorithm, as in if I am friends with Instagram and I show up and I'm visible and I do a lot of Instagram lives and stories, uh, a lot of people do tend to see my posts. So I do get good engagement. And that has been really good in communicating my message of who I am as a person. And so I guess that's why something like Facebook, although I know it's a huge market that perhaps I need to check in with and and tap into more, sometimes I find that quite hard in terms of selling myself on that because that's what I'm literally doing. I'm not selling a business or a, a product in that kind of way. I'm, I'm selling myself. And generally, if your clients work with you, they have to like you. Um, I did a bit of Google Drive action many, many years ago. Still no idea what that really is. And um, and Twitter's good for me as well. But, but certainly the podcast has been quite fascinating in the response um, because – people re- and also since actually going to events afterwards uh, where people I've never met before um, have listened to the podcast and they really come up to me like they know me which is lovely but unexpected as well and you realize what an intimate thing it is to be in somebody's ears and to be sharing a part of you and that's why I started it in a way because i wanted to dispel this one size fits all version of success. I wanted to tell different stories. I wanted to hear different opinions and different ways of doing things because I felt like that was missing. Certainly in the female entrepreneur world, there's very much a here's how I made six figures and, you know, in a three part video series, there's a lot of sort of same content being regurgitated. So, um, yeah, I've I've absolutely loved creating the podcast and it continues to grow. And uh, it, yeah, it's a fantastic marketing tool as well for my coaching clients because they know that they're going to be safe. They know that they're going to be well looked after. They know what to expect. They maybe know a little bit about my background. They know I'm not going to judge them. So it's it's been great in that capacity as well. Uh, I've not uh, ventured into uh, Instagram stories. Um, could you maybe just just explain what what's the difference between uh, stories uh, as opposed to just a normal 
uh, photograph post uh, that obviously a lot of people know Instagram as? Yeah, on Instagram, um, you have the series of squares that you can share pictures and with a with a caption. Um, but with something like Instagram stories, it's a, an option that shows much more of a beso- behind the scenes version of your life. So um, there are a series of 15 second clips so you can make as many or as few as you want um and then and that's quite nice you know you can do a you can pan across a room of somewhere that you are but you can also share photos on there as well and people can watch little films of your life as it were if they're so inclined to do so but the insta live option is something that has been really great for me because it's a way of engaging with my audience with instagram stories you're simply putting out and creating the content whereas insta live and this is another thing that i've certainly learned is that tell people in advance when you're going to go online because it's lovely when people say oh i got my husband to put the kids to bed tonight so i could i could join you and one thing that's really work for me is doing some kind of theme so um i've got one that i'm running tomorrow morning um which won't be tomorrow morning as you're listening to this but come and follow me i'm I'm doing them all the time which is one about how to find your ideal clients or sometimes i'll do things about um how to negotiate or i'll do one at the beginning of the month of how to map out your month ahead and it's really nice for building community And also people getting to know you again, which is great for client generation, but also it makes people join in the conversation. And because I ask quite probing questions sometimes and because people are in the safety of their own laptop or their own phone sitting and watching, they're much more likely to engage because it isn't a case of putting your hand up at a huge conference center. You're you're safe. So you're finding um, actual uh, engagement with with uh, uh, potential customers or, uh, or future clients uh, and questions in engagement on this? Yes, absolutely. And it was something that was sort of unexpected. And I think this is a, another valid point is that sometimes running your own business or going to the next level or going for a, a promotion or a new role can be quite a scary experience because we have all these limiting beliefs of, you know, who am I to do this? What will people think? Am I the best person for the job? And we really hold ourselves back. And certainly I did that in my own coaching journey for a long time. I wasn't as visible as I needed to be. In I wouldn't say that I was lazy because I was working very hard, but I wasn't necessarily focusing on the right things. And I think that's really key in terms of your industry, whatever that might be, is focus on the things that is really going to help people connect with you. So, um, you know, we know this old phrase of people want to work with people. But I think in this these crowded markets that we have where everybody's got a voice or everybody's starting something new, it can be really easy for your customer to get distracted. So if you can stand out from the crowd and do things your own way, you're much more likely to get traction. Join you and uh, and and learn a bit more <laughs> of that about that. Um, definitely sounds like um, it's been working for you. Um, therefore, just just to then bring us back to to the coaching uh, uh, and calls and things that you you do professionally. Um, what's a what's a sort of um, client look like for you? Uh, and again, I think this is important just to start off with is that the coaching client that I had have now was different to how it began. So I began by coaching a lot of actors and creatives because I knew that industry very well. And I had been an agent for five years as my out of work acting job. So I kind of stayed in that arena for a long time. But now the people that I get are creatives, freelancers, small businesses, um, personal brands, people who want to shake things up and not necessarily live by other people's rules or expectations. Some of them have children, some of them have worked in the corporate environment and they want to start up their own business 
or perhaps they've worked in a corporate environment and they want to take those skills and create something brand new that is going to fit much more so with this age and stage of their life. Maybe they're looking after, I don't know, an elderly parent or they've got young children or maybe they want to be location independent. There's all kinds of reasons. But um, what people come to me for is strategy. Well, firstly, clarity, I would say of usually it starts with I've got this idea that has been floating around in my head for a little while and what I do then with them is help them to get really clear on what that idea looks like because the more clarity that you can get with whatever it is that you're doing the quicker that process is then going to be for you because especially if you're squeezed on time or money or energy you know if you're running it as a side hustle at the end of the day after a busy working week you really need to make sure that you're focusing on the right things and sometimes we don't know what those things are because there isn't necessarily a rule book for your uh your industry or the way that you should do things it's not a case of saying well you know I want to be a doctor and so therefore I must do my seven years or however long it is medical training it's much more so about what is the design of your business that you want to create also as well I help people to monetize things quite early on because a lot of especially creative people as well they kind of have this imposter syndrome where they feel like they still have to dip their toe in for a long time or not charge for things so I really help people to make it work for them as a business I also help people to create passive income which has been really useful for me my as I mentioned um, selling courses that's been great I sold two of my books when I was in labor which is the best uh, PR stunt ever but it was a real example not that my partner was going right cough up you know you know need to pay for the taxi but bizarrely that's what it did do and I really found that power of you know I'm doing something completely different here but yet I'm still able to continue and run my business and I have systems to support that so often it is a combination of how you can put all of those things together because I know sometimes my clients will have that moment of oh gosh I've got it's today's the day where I have to write my about page and what I'm able to do is to help and pull out those very important bits about themselves that maybe they don't feel is that important and to create something that is really eye-catching and connects with their audience. So um, I have a course called Business Goals where I take people through 16 modules and it really gives you that step-by-step of like, how are you going to make money? What services and products do you want to create? What's on your yes list? What's on your no list? What's your focus for the next six months? So really helping people to simplify it as well because suddenly I know and I know this myself when we get overwhelmed we can very easily overcomplicate things so it's all about simplicity for me if you if you came and uh, you you've gone out on your own or you're looking to to come into consulting um you you might offer people advice on presenting themselves but equally um if they've realized they they don't have the support of of, of departments of, of staff uh, they've now got to manage everything themselves you might help them uh, get get that sort of uh, uh, a, a mass of, of, of different hats you have to put on uh, in order to yeah is, is absolutely sort of and to know how to move between those hats as well and again I think this is an important thing is that a lot of people say oh, it's okay I can do all of the things I'm a really hard worker I'll, I'll get the job done yeah what it takes uh, to be able to do the work that you want to do especially if you're helping people personally you need to make sure that you can fully show up for those people as well so also there may be elements of when to delegate or when to drop certain things or when to increase your prices all of this stuff that we don't really know when the moment is happening because we're not waiting for that person to say would you like to come through and you know discuss in your appraisal you are doing all of the things for yourself 
Okay. And you mentioned uh, another term uh, just before as well that people might not be familiar, familiar with of uh, passive income. Um, maybe you could just cover what, what is passive income? Uh, is it just for, for people or businesses? or, or what, Yeah, uh, passive mean? income sometimes can be a bit of a sleazy phrase because uh, it can be used in a in a disingenuous way, I guess. Um, For me, passive income in its simplicity is to create something as in a product or a course or a book or an audio, all of which are very useful to my customer or my audience. And I create it once and then it sells itself. So this is not to say that every morning I wake up and I go, oh, great, 50 courses sold. I'll just go to sleep for the rest of the day. By no means. Of course, there are working hours that I have that are not chargeable in the way that I'm not working with a client directly. I'm still marketing myself. But one thing that I found um, is that I have about, I don't know, 15 different um, revenue streams. And that has been really great for me because sometimes my clients are at different kind of stages. So there may be people that are literally just starting out and um, they need a course that they're going to be doing because they're just sort of playing around with the idea. And then it goes all the way up to people who go, no, I need you one-on-one for three months and I need to do this and now is my time. So passive income has been great in a way that it offers a lower cost product um, to my customer. However, I know that passive income is not always lower cost. This is just in in my circumstance. Um, And also it allows people to be able to learn and take one of my courses on their terms and around their circumstances. And this is often something that I'll say to my clients is not everybody needs to work with you one-on-one. And often we believe that that is the case that, you know, I'm running my business, so I need to be there and I need to explain things to that person. And it may be the case where not everybody can afford you because your time is the only thing that you have to play with. So passive income for me has been that. Obviously, when I I've created courses or products. It's taken me a long time to put that information out there and pull it all together and record it. But it's a lovely feeling also now to know that I've got the technology where things can crack on and and sell themselves, as it were. Taking uh, consulting with you. Um, Are they looking for improvements and I mean, do you, do you help them work out what is a, what's an improvement going to look like for them uh, to see where yeah, they're going? I, well, I never I never offer a one size fits all solution in the way that I'm never welcoming them into my world saying, hi, I've got a perfect life. Would you like a perfect life, too? Because, I mean, for goodness sake, I just couldn't take myself seriously doing that in any shape or form. So for me, it's always been about how I manage expectations and how I can really connect with what my client wants. That is absolutely key. So I know there can be that assumption that everybody wants to have a multi-million pound business. Not everybody does. Some people don't want that stress or they don't want that responsibility or whatever it might be. So in terms of helping them to get their results, it's really important that I know what those results are for them. And sometimes I do have discovery calls and I'll talk to the person and they'll be saying things. And I now have that confidence and obviously the income and the experience to be able to say, do you know what? I don't think I'm the right person for you. And also that's really a key to my integrity as well, because I want to keep working with my ideal client, the people that are going to get me and really thrive and get results because that's how my business and my coaching grows. Um, it's in a way it's, and I'm not saying that I've always had this right. Of course, you know, I've had a few moments I had to learn the hard way where I'd taken on clients and I not was out of my depth, but I just wasn't necessarily aligned with them as a person and their vision. So now I'm very clear about the expectations and what they want to achieve. And therefore, I know whether I can help them to make a plan of action to make it happen. That sounds great. And could you give us um, maybe some some tips or some takeaways as we come to the end of the interview uh, of 
how people could think about um, uh, either strategizing or, or setting their goals? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there can be sometimes this pressure of the five year plan, and I don't know where it came from. Um, It's one of those things I'm sure we all heard if our parents had dinner parties, or, you know, you were asked at weddings, like, what's your five year plan? And I feel like five years is is too much for people because life um, and technology is constantly changing and we don't know what's necessarily going to be around or in in five years time so it's quite hard to um, really set things in stone however what I would always say when it comes to goal setting and figuring thing, figuring things out is to really check in with what you want because ultimately you're the common denominator in your life and focusing on that and going I know this sounds woo woo but going inside and really checking in with your values and what's important and how do you want to spend your life and what kind of uh, you can go into more detail have an exercise on my website um, where what does your ideal day look like um there's lots of detail that you can do there. And if you work from a point of how do I want to create my life and my work, that is much easier to navigate. And therefore, once you know what sort of scenario or environment you want to create, you'll therefore be able to say yes, or say, well, if I don't want to work, Fridays, then Monday to Thursday, I've got to earn X so I can make it work. Um, There's also a great coaching system called SMART um, that you can follow, which is uh, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. So sometimes I will have clients that will say to me, I just want a successful business, or I just want to earn more money, or I just want to feel happier or feel like me, which are actually quite, and I totally get where they're coming from. Of course, I've said all of those phrases, but that's really hard to action. As in when you're sitting at your laptop on a drizzly Tuesday morning and going, I just want to feel more like me. You can't actually write that on a to-do list. So by using that smart model, it really helps you to get specific. So say it was an exercise goal and you were saying, I just want to feel uh, healthier in myself being specific and saying, right, that means going to the gym three times a week, uh, measurable, uh, you'd be able to know at the end of the week whether you had achieved that or not, achievable, realistic, making sure that that was possible. If you've just, I don't know, had a back surgery, you're probably not wanting to put a, a gym session in the day after. So you've got to make sure that you're working within your life circumstances and also giving yourself a time bound situation. So I know I have a lot of clients that sometimes think that they need two years to do something or they need to have the perfect fortnight where they're free to uh, completely focus on that idea or growing it. But you know what? Because we're all grown ups, the likelihood is we don't have a spare fortnight willy nilly available for us to find ourselves. So it's really about looking at the time that you have available and making it really work for you. And having time bound also keeps you accountable. I always do this with my clients in like and I push them and I know I probably annoy them, but I'm always saying, when do you want to get this done by? What's your date on this? What's the deadline that you're giving to yourself? Because otherwise, because life is busy, we can all slip into, oh, I'll do it over the summer or in the new year or um, at some point in the future. And when we do that, we don't necessarily become strategic with what we're doing. So, of course, you know, sometimes life gets in the way and you need to move your timetable around or shuffle things up a little bit. That's absolutely fine. You know, you can move these things. But certainly as a starting point, using that smart model will really help you to focus and spend your time effectively. That sounds really good. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Do you have anything else you'd like to uh, be able to tell the audience about? Um, uh, what's the, the sort of best place to uh, to come and see you? Or um, uh, if you'd like to, to tell us about any sort of specials or anything uh, that you've got coming up? 
Yeah, of course. Um, so you can come over to my website, which is nikkiraby.com. And if you go to the coaching part uh, on the main navigation, um, you can find out how you can work with me one on one. I do a variety of options. Uh, I offer a variety of options. So I have a pick my brain session. I have a strategy session, which is much more geared around small business and taking your business and your brand to the next level. I also then have a monthly intensive and a three month intensive. And usually in those packages, they are the packages that make people go, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the leap or I'm going to shake things up and I'm going to dedicate this time to be able to do that. And that's when I really get into the nitty gritty gritty work with people because there's a lot of email support going back and forth and you really feel like you're um, in cahoots with this person actually of feeling like, yeah, we're doing it and I'm really helping you to do what it is that you want. Also, I have lots of online courses so you can go and find out more about those. I have a business goals course, uh, which again, I mentioned earlier. Um, And I also have a passive income course, which may be useful for people who are maybe just a bit well maybe looking to shake up their career a little bit and not necessarily just cash their money their time in for money um and also you can follow me across social media at nikki raby n-i-c-k-y r-a-b-y and i'm always popping up there especially on instagram and um one thing that i would say as a final sort of pointer i guess is give yourself permission to change your thinking and to look outside of what has been told to you I know at school we we are told this right way of living of how we are supposed to do things and it's all about the expectations of you you do well in your exams you go to and do your a-levels you go to a good university and then you get a good and steady job However, if that's not working for you and you've got a little niggle of an idea, you don't necessarily have to do it in a bold way of going, right, that's it, I'm walking out and I'm never going to see these people again. But there are ways that you can dip your toe into other different areas of your life. And that's not to say that something is always going to be a business, but it may be something that just really lights you up and makes you feel good and makes you feel more like you so if you do have those inner voices or those niggles or just that sense that you should do something or shake things up it's there for a reason so don't ignore it and you don't have to know the whole plan immediately you don't know have to know exactly what it's going to look like if you just got a little seedling um, go with that and um, and reach out to people if it's not me you know find other coaches or watch a I don't know a YouTube TED talk or listen to a podcast there's so many people out there who get it as well and are more than willing to support you and uh, encourage you and cheerlead you all the way I've enjoyed speaking to you where uh, uh, I would thoroughly advise people to, to come and uh, uh, give you a call. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's been great having you on and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Cliff Notes podcast. I love to hear feedback. And if you'd like to get in contact with the guest or myself, you can message me on Twitter at Tristan Bailey or on holdingbay.co.uk slash podcast. As always, please like, share and subscribe to this show on iTunes and see you next time where we can see how people are using digital technologies to move manufacturing forward.